Well, the Idaho Division of Public Health has a COVID-19 website. You've probably taken a peek at it at least once over these last few pandemic months. And on it, they break down COVID-related deaths across the state. As of just a bit ago, they counted 100 confirmed cases and 22 probable deaths for a total of 122 since we recorded our first death back in March. And I know what you're thinking. Probable? What's that? Don't they know how someone died? Well, yes, they do. Or how about this question we get a lot? How do we know the reported COVID deaths are accurate? What about when someone dies of, say, a heart attack and they are still counted as a COVID related death? Well, to get the answer to those and other COVID related death questions, we asked Deputy State Epidemiologist Dr. Katherine Turner to explain how we account for COVID fatalities. We're doing the best we can to realistically count the deaths that are related to COVID-19. And I wanna be really clear about what that word is. It's COVID-19 related. So what that means is that um, maybe a person has some other underlying conditions, but having the infection with COVID-19 ultimately um, caused the death. It doesn't mean that they didn't die of a heart attack, for instance, but without that viral infection, they may not have died of the, of the heart infection heart attack or something like that. So if it's just a note on the death certificate that this person tested positive three months ago or something like that, they're not going to be counted as a COVID-19 death. Okay. I'm sure you probably just as much as anybody else gets kind of tired of hearing these kind of rampant theories out there about this. How do you feel about them? What I would say is that um, it's, we're still learning new things every day. And that is an uncomfortable place for anybody to be. When you think you know what's going on with the virus, and then new information is released, it can seem like it's changing every day and no one really knows what's going on. And to a certain extent, that's correct. Um, we are learning new information every day. The science is evolving and we have to evolve with it. And when you um, feel like you don't have every single piece of, the, of information, then you're, the human being is gonna try to connect the dots even if you can't connect all the dots with, with science quite yet. So I think it's human nature to try to find the answer to the questions that you have. And sometimes in science, we don't have the answer to the question. Is it possible to have more than one cause of death on a death certificate? Yes, it is. There are different sections of death certificates. There's your immediate cause of death. There's your underlying cause of death. There's um, significant conditions leading to death. In our definition, if it's either a contributing cause or above, then we are causing, we are um, counting it as a COVID related death. Let's say it is flu season. You get the flu that leads to pneumonia, but then because your body is fighting off the pneumonia, you could die of a stroke, but you'd still be charted as a flu death. I mean, is that, am I kind of on, on the same level there? Yeah. So, um, of course, it depends on the situation, but what you just described, your immediate cause of death would be the stroke, right? Okay. So I think that's how you said it. Sure. Um, but your underlying cause of death would be pneumonia and a significant contributing factor would be influenza. It has to be a significant part of the patient's illness. Yeah. And I think the other important message is we're not doing anything different with coronavirus than we would do with influenza. Um, than we would do with pneumonia. Um, you know, it's, it's essentially the same process. It's just a different virus that we're counting. So, and nobody complains about our stats for influenza every year, so. I hear you. Well, Dr. Turner wanted to be clear. She is not an expert on nosology, which is the classification of diseases. And that's what people study to kind of certify these deaths. She says there's a whole division of well-trained professionals that are very precise about what they do put on a death certificate because it is an important legal document after all. But she certainly knows how the reporting system works in Idaho. A physician can, a physician can certify a death and so can a coroner. And that certification process can take hours or days and up to weeks, depending on the depths of the investigation. Dr. Turner says, though, the state's electronic re record system when it comes to deaths is pretty up to date. They get their COVID related death data fairly quickly, usually within 24 to 72 hours, and it's counted on the COVID website. The pandemic has changed nothing in that process. Deaths are certified, they say, or they, the way they were today or the way they are today, I should, I should say, as they were a year ago today. And just to point out,
We've had four new totals added to the state totals just today.